How do you build an app? What are all of the things you need? Today, we're covering a list of 14 items you need to build your app. Hello, and welcome to App Creative. If you're new here, my name is Dale Richards. I'm a software innovator from Salt Lake City, Utah, and I love making software that changes the world. If you want to build apps, grow your SaaS business, and make money doing cool software entrepreneur-related stuff, start now by subscribing and hitting the bell. Welcome to 2021, everybody. Some quick announcements, as you may have noticed. Swattage is no longer Swattage, the software innovation lab. We have rebranded, and now we are called App Creative. That's right, App Creative is our new brand, and we're changing our brand because we felt like App Creative communicated a lot more to you, our viewers, and also to our clients about who we are and our mission to create apps to change the world. So, we are now App Creative. So excited to have you along with us on this journey. Now, the good thing is, is that all the old videos are gonna stay up just the way that they are. We might change some thumbnails, but, but generally like the video content is going to stay up. So you can continue to watch the videos we created in 2020 uh, with all the information there about value proposition, etc. So keep watching those videos. Uh, we'll leave them up for your reference. Webinars, we're going to be doing at least one, if not two webinars per month. We're gonna focus these webinars on the process of going from concept to cash in different steps along the way. That's a great way to engage with us and to, uh, to interact and get, to get some more feedback, ask some questions and, and participate in, in our learning forums. So this month's webinar on January the 20th is on UX design, bringing your app to life. Make sure you join us. If you want to sign up for webinars, go to appcreative.eventbrite.com and you can see all the webinars that we're offering and you can sign up for the ones that interest you. Third item, we have this cool notebook that's coming out. Uh, it's a, an A5 size notebook that you can use to uh, capture your uh, app sketches, your UX design ideas. That's in production right now. It's gonna be available uh, in March. So uh, we will make that available. So if you want to, you can get one of those and I'll let you know uh, when I have more updates about that notebook. So fun stuff. Okay, how to build an app. What are some of the things that you need? This is gonna be a quick high level overview of 14 really important things that you need to have in order to build your app. So we're, gonna, we're not gonna go into these in a lot of detail because we don't have time, but we will do a deeper dive into each of these individually as the year progresses. But if, if you are sitting down saying, hey, this year we've gotta build this app, what do we need in order to make that happen? This video is for you. Number one, the first item you need in order to build your app successfully is a clear market and value proposition. And we've been talking about market fit and value proposition on this channel since April of 2020. So we've been talking about this for a while. Uh, the last nine months have been mostly about that. So if you have missed some of those videos, you can check out this playlist. Again, some of them are branded with the old branding, but that's okay. Go and watch them anyway, catch up. Um, also check out the value proposition canvas by Strategizer, which we also talk about in the videos. So make sure that you're using resources like that to think through your value proposition and your market fit. That's number one. Number two, you need a good set of user stories. And by user stories, we're talking about the clear statements that say what it is that the user is supposed to be able to do in your app. If you want more detailed information about user stories and how to write them, check out this playlist uh, for uh, some of the previous videos we've done about user story writing, what makes them good, what makes them bad, all that good stuff. Number three, you need a clear brand and voice. Now you might not think that a, an app needs a voice or a brand, but when people are gonna use your app, they're going to interact with it in a certain way. And what's really important in when you're when creating an app experience is the emotions that people feel after using your app or while they're using your app. So what you want to do is you want to think through how are we gonna communicate our brand in this application? What you want to do is you want to communicate specifically uh, the emotions around your brand in the, the colors, the, um, the text that you're using, anything, that you're, anything that's going to be consumed by the, by the user. You want to make sure that it is in line with your brand and, and with your voice. Number four, you need UX design mockups. Uh, we're talking about going from, uh, from user stories to wireframes to high fidelity mockups. So you need a good set of mockups that show exactly how each screen in your app is going to look so that your developers can reference those mockups and they can build those mockups accordingly. 
If you want more information about UX design, make sure you join the webinar and also keep following videos during the first quarter of this year because we're gonna be doing some UX design on the, the Dental Practice Manager app, the, the trade school app that we've been talking about last year. After you finish your UX design and all your mockups, I recommend going back and doing another pass to gather a set of what we call technical requirements. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about those technical requirements in greater detail. But, but what, what happens is that you're gonna create all these user stories and the mockups, and then you're gonna have like things like lists and stuff like that. And you're gonna to want to think through some more of the technical, less intuitive requirements that you want to explicitly call out to the developers. Like, so for example, you've got a list of chats. Well, is that list of chats gonna be in chronological order? Uh, or do we have all of the requirements thought through in terms of notifications and, and what the rules are that govern when someone will be notified? So there's lots of little technical, nitty gritty details that you need to think through and make sure that you explicitly document those so the developers know what to do around some of those features. That's number five. Number six, you need an architecture. Based upon the user experience, you need to understand exactly, well, how are we going to set up this system? Are we gonna have this database, this backend, this front end? Is it gonna be mobile? Is it gonna be web? Which browsers are we supporting? Stuff like that. So we wanna decide exactly what, what's the footprint of the technology, like the applications that are gonna run on servers and, and how are we going to operate those servers, those applications, and, and we have to understand architecture to understand those things. Number seven, user identity management. I'm talking about uh, you know, user logins and passwords. I'm talking about saving and storing personally identifiable information, trying to find ways to uh, be compliant with, uh, with GDPR and other data privacy laws so that you, uh, so people can actually safely register for and log into your app. And how also are they going to change their password when they forget it? So you need some kind of user identity management built somewhere into your application. Don't forget that part. Number eight, you need backend development meaning that somewhere there's a, there's a, a backend application that's gonna be talking to the database. You need uh, the front end to be able to call the backend. And so, so you have to have a good backend application running somewhere on the server so that uh, all the users that are trying to use your app that they can retrieve their data appropriately. Which brings me to the next item, which is number nine, front end development. You need a good front end user interface. So it could be a mobile front end, it could be a web front end. There's lots of different ways and, and types of, of front ends that you can build. You can build them in different languages, different uh, using different um, or different libraries. But but the main thing is, is that you have to have a front end for the user to actually interact with it. You need that front end. Number ten, integration. Once you've got your back end and your front end, you need to be able to integrate those two. So you need to spend you need to plan time and money for the for your developers to integrate your front end. And your back end. So integration is a key part of putting it all together. And I love integration because that's when apps really come together. Super exciting time. Number 11, you need testing. And I would recommend just finding a good tester who's not you, unless you have a background in, in quality assurance. But there are people out there that specialize just in testing applications. When you find people that are really good at testing, hold on to those people, engage them, get someone else who's a professional at quality assurance to test your app. Number 12, you have to obviously deploy your application. So you have to launch it. That means that you need to, to deploy code bases to servers. You have to also like um, submit apps to the App Store or to Google Play. You, know, you have to be able to distribute them in some way through test flight. So the apps have to be deployed in some way for your users to be able to use them. Number 13, support channels. After you've launched, deployed your app, people are starting to use it. They're gonna need help. You want to uh, be able to provide that help to them. And, and so people have to have some way of reaching out to you. So if it's a phone number, or if it's um, a, a chat queue that they can get into, or if you can provide some kind of knowledge base, you need some way for people to be able to get help using your app, especially if it's an MVP. You know, it's a, it's a brand new, first time out on the market, you're, gonna, you're testing it in the wild, people are going to run into difficulties. You're going to sort through some of like the, um, some of the nitty gritty that you haven't thought through before, that you haven't tested. You're gonna experience strange things while your app is in the wild for the first few weeks or months. And so you want people to be able to get support. And therefore you need support channels, ways people can get that support. And then the final thing, number 14, is the actual support itself. Which means that you have to have someone, if it's you or if you're a startup or if you have someone on your team that can provide support, that can respond to people's support requests, uh, apps don't just support themselves. You need to, to be able to provide that support so people can find a way to reach you and get in touch with you. Now, obviously, support is costly. 
Um, in some with with some SaaS companies, they charge money for premium support, but they can give some kind of basic support in terms of self help or like a, you know you can submit a ticket. But you have to be able to, especially when you are new and you're just launching an MVP, you need someone to manage the support queue and to see what's coming in. And this is a good thing because you want feedback and feedback is a gift. You need people to be able to get help so that you can see where are we not meeting their needs. And that way you can go through and you can look that, at that data and you can say, this is what we're going to change. This is what we need to, to tweak in the next few months so that people have a better experience using our app. So there you go, 14 things that you need to consider when building your app. Build your app this year, make it happen. Come back for more detail. We're gonna be diving into each of these and continuing to have some more SaaS stories with other founders, learning from their experience, all that and more right here on App Creative. We'll see you soon. Join us again. Videos are published every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 12 noon Mountain Time.